Hey everybody, welcome to The Chosen Life. Today I'm gonna go over a couple things that I see questions asked all the time on forums, pages, everything, and seemingly there are tons of terrible answers. No, the first thing we're gonna get into today is what kind of rod do I need to use, okay? I do a ton of fishing for a ton of different species. I've caught tons of walleye in my life. Um, <laughs> you do not need expensive gear, okay? This is my primary rod that I use. This is a eight, eight to 14 pound line, seven foot six, medium action, Shakespeare Wild Series combo, okay? You can catch any walleye in the Great Lakes with this rod, any of them. They have drag on that works. It comes with a line counter reel. You can see the line counter. And it's a one piece combo. These things are $70 and you can buy them on Amazon. They're real easy to find. You can buy them online. A lot of places, they sell them at Walmart some places. These work fine. You do not need more than this. Walleye are not known to be the hardest fighting sport fish there is. They're not gonna take hundreds of yards of drag like King Salmon. And I constantly see people on forums and pages saying you need these giant Daiwa reels and these, that's cold water trolling gear. That's the stuff that I use for salmon. Totally not necessary. I've never had a walleye rip a board completely or rip a line or rod completely out of my hand. You do not need it, okay? Look up this kind of stuff. Worst case scenario, I break shit all the time. That's part of fishing. If I break one of these rods, I can go take this reel off and put it on a whatever I have uh, over here got an ugly stick that was like 40 bucks. Same thing, medium action, same length type thing. And you're, you're good to go. You don't need more than this. So now the next step we're gonna get into, the other thing I wanted to cover today is how to calibrate. How, I see this question all the time. People ask, how do I know how far back my bait is running? We well, have to calibrate your reel. Another thing, these guys with these high capacity reels, well, spool it up 20 pound test first, splice in 10 pound, no. Okay, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Don't make it more complicated than it is. You don't need high capacity reels. I buy 1600 yard spools, a Berkeley big game, 10 pound test. They're like 12 bucks, once again. Amazon, click and buy. I take these, step one, we take these and we fill this all the way to the top where we think it's almost to the top, all right? We run that line, how we hook it up, we run it from the spool through the very tip of the rod all the way down to here and then we fill it all the way up. So I'm like, okay, that looks full-ish to me. All the, usually you can see where the spool stops, get it as close to that as you can. Step number one. Now we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna finish the rest of this as easy as I possibly can and break it down and uh, we'll make this super simple. Okay, so we're outside, this is how dumb and easy this is. I spool this reel up all the way to where I thought it's about damn near full, all right? I'm taking this screwdriver and this spool, which I ran through the tip, I'm going to stake it in the ground right here. From when I stake it in the ground, I'm gonna get out a wheel or a tape measure, I have a wheel measure, and we'll run down my driveway 100 feet, okay? So let's do that now. So now I walked it all the way back to my 100 foot mark, which is now right where my rod tip is, right here in the dirt. And you look, my reel reads 98 feet, okay? So what that means is it's a little bit short, so I need to add more line, probably four or five revolutions, I don't know. We're just gonna do it. I'm gonna reel it for probably five seconds and we're gonna find out what makes a difference. So now we're right here where we need to be. I got a little too much on it. Now we're over where I'm a little bit short. So we're at 106, okay? I'd rather have it a little longer than a little short. That way I have to cut line and break stuff off. It's fine it's still gonna be within that margin of error. But that's the best way to calibrate a fishing rod. Um, add, take away, but make sure you spool it all the way up, pull it back down. It's, it's super easy to do it this way. This is the best way to figure out how to calibrate one. Buy some cheap line, fill them all the way up, that good Berkeley Big Game XT, and go from there. Okay, so we went over a couple different things today. Um, uh, fishing rods don't have to be expensive to get out there. On top of that, calibrating a rod is not hard. Follow exactly what I did out there, it's easy enough to do, okay? If you, if you clear your line counter and you pull it out, if it's 100 before you're actually to 100 feet, you need to add more line. If it's over, when you hit 100 feet, you need to take some off. I like to leave a little extra, so it gives me room for error, like maybe 105, 
somewhere in there, 104. So that way I got room, I can cut and retie, and I know it's still gonna be in that same strike zone. So once again, thank you for watching these videos. Um, I try to keep it simple. I just see so many terrible answers on how to do things and people just not, they don't have to take the time to explain it. It doesn't have to be hard. If you follow these, you'll boat fish and you can get out fishing. I answer people's questions all the time on YouTube and they ask me those questions, uh, message me. I love talking fishing either way. If you wanna give me advice, I'm always open to learn new shit, all right? I, I, I'm open-minded to everything, but I don't make it harder than it has to be. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, at The Chosen Life Outdoors, you can email me, thechosenlifeoutdoors at gmail.com. And um, from there, we, uh, we'll end this video and, and move on to the next thing. So walleye season right now, I just got done. Um, walleye fishing yesterday, actually, and boated a ton of fish. Probably gonna be my next trip's gonna be walleye too. Um, it's right now it's mid-March. It's like March 14th. So we're getting to the heart of that pre-spawn season and it's on fire in 2021 So get on the water Use your resources people that spend time fishing inland lakes only You're not using you're not maximizing your potential. We have so much great fish We're the luckiest people in the world in Michigan. I'm surrounded by water fresh water and I can fish all so that's my goal is to do um, And try to help you get into doing the same things. So uh, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time